extra space storage stock, ticker symbol EXR. This stock is up roughly 7% on the year to date chart. On the overall market, in this case, the S&P 500 is up roughly 8%, so that's pretty similar. On the 2nd of May, EXR presented quarter results where they beat on FFO, but slightly missed on revenue expectations. For the upcoming earnings, all analysis expect a miss. From a dividend point of view, things look pretty interesting with dividend yield at 4%, and 12 years of dividend increases, with a high 5-year compound annual growth rate. But does this mean that EXR stock is a buy at current prices? Well, in this video I'm going to show you real quickly what EXR does. The most recent earnings report, the fundamental analysis, dividends, returns versus the S&P 500, comparison versus major competitors, and in the last part I'm giving you my price target to see if they are a buy or not. And I think you definitely want to see that part, so make sure to watch until the end. And I'm also very excited to see what you guys think about this talk, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does EXR do? Extra space storage invests in self-storage facilities. The company rents storage units including climate control units, drive-up units, lockers, boat storage, RV storage and business storage. So first of all I want to cover some highlights for the first quarter of 2023. EXR achieved a net income of $1.46 per share, which is a 3.3% decrease year over year. FFO was reported a little bit over $2 per share, representing a 0.5 increase year over year. The same store revenue increased 7.4% year over year, and NOI increased 8.7% year over year, which are both very nice. The same store occupancy rate was at 93.5%, down from 94.3% last year. To me, this number doesn't look that great to be honest. I prefer 95% or higher for this company. EXR added 48 stores and managed 931 stores for third parties, and 323 stores in joint ventures, which gives us a total of 1254 managed stores. Last but not least, EXR paid $1.62 in dividend, which is easily covered by the FFO of $2, representing a payout ratio of 80%. If we dive in the FFO a little deeper, we see that not much happened year over year. So that's definitely something to keep your eye on. You want to see higher growth numbers here. Another important note is that EXR announced the definitive merger agreement with Live Storage in an old stock transaction. The transaction is currently expected to close in the second half of 2023. Following the merger, the company combined portfolio will be over 3,500 locations. The full year 2023 outlook hasn't changed much. It's still expected that EXR will deliver a core FFO of 8.3 on the low side to 8.6 on the high side. Same store revenue growth will also be the same as the previous outlook, giving a 3.75% on the low side to a 5.25% on the high side. Expenses are expected to be in a 5-6% range, which is pretty interesting since it's higher than the revenue growth, so margins are likely to fall a little bit. Another important number for me is the net debt to EBITDA ratio. I prefer this number to be in a range of 5-6.5. to EXR reported 4.9, so that's pretty good. It's sitting on the low side of this range. And now that we know more about this company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free. And to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue with diving into the fundamentals. EXR is a 20.5 billion market cap company. PE ratio isn't a fair metric to use with REITs, so I will be using the price to FFO instead. Right now it's sitting at 19.15, which is a bit on the high side to be honest. Later in this video I will show you my price target for EXR, so make sure to watch until the end, because price to FFO is only telling a small part of the full story here. 
revenue is at 1.92 billion. And in this graph, we see that revenue went up quite nice and steady over a longer period of time. During the lockdown period, revenue accelerated a bit. The question is, can they sustain these growth levels? Over a longer period of time, margins are increasing, which is very nice. But most recently, margins are decreasing a bit, so that's something to keep your eye on. And we see interesting things happening at the analysis estimations. We see ups and downs between almost no growth to high single digit growth. I would say an average of mid single digit growth for the EPS. With the revenue estimations, we also see mid single digit growth numbers. Return on assets is sitting at 7.5%, which is below my 10% minimum. But for a read, it's pretty decent. Return on equity looks really good at 26%. And the most important number, return on invested capital, is sitting at 6.9%, which is not the highest of course. But I do like the current number is higher than the 5 year average. Current ratio is at 0.27, which is really low. I prefer a number between 0.5 and 1.5 for this type of company. Total debt is sitting at 7.3 billion, and I prefer companies that can pay down at least a third of the total debt with the total cash position. Right now, total cash is sitting at 90 million, so they can't pay down a big chunk of their debt, which is something that I don't like. But since this is a read, it doesn't worry me that much. However, it's very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends, and a lot of things. And in here we see that free cash flow is going up over a longer period of time. However, recent numbers are starting to decrease. And another thing that I think is very interesting about this company are the shares outstanding. It's going up in the long run, but not as much as with the other REITs. When shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio, and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 4.90%, which is a great number of course. Animal payout is at $6.48 and payout ratio is at 80% as we saw earlier in this video and not the 97% displayed here. The average for REIT is around 75%, so that's not too bad. Right now they have roughly 20% left in cash to buy back shares, pay down debt, acquisitions, research and a lot of things. The 5 year compound annual growth rate is at 14.4%, which is a great number for a REIT and they grew the dividends for 12 years in a row. Overall, these dividends look pretty good to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare EXR stock with the overall market, in this case, the S&P 500. Next to that, I added three competitors, Live Storage, ticker symbol LSI, CubeSmart, ticker symbol Cube, and Public Storage, ticker symbol PSA. On the 5 year chart we see that EXR had a 98% return including dividends, beating the S&P 500 big time, but also most competitors. Only LSI had a higher return with 173%. PSA had the lowest return, but still beats the S&P 500. On the 1 year chart it looks pretty different. EXR had a minus 15% return while the S&P 500 returned nearly flat numbers with 1.5%. LSI had the highest return and PSA also had a low return of minus 9%. On the 6 month chart it's again EXR and PSA with the lowest return and LSI had the highest return with 34%. The S&P 500 is sitting at a decent 10%. On the 1 month chart it's again EXR and PSA with the lowest return. The S&P 500 had the highest return, but to be honest it's not a big difference. So bottom line, EXR has beaten the S&P 500 in the long run, but most recently it's not looking that great in terms of returns. But how about some fundamentals compared to the other companies in this list? We see that these four companies are quite different in market cap and enterprise value. PE ratio is pretty similar and also not the best way to value a REIT. Price to free cash flow is also pretty similar, so no winner here. Revenue growth year over year is the highest at LSI, and so is the 5 year compound annual growth rate. The net income compound annual growth rate is the highest at PSA. Last but not least is the free cash flow compound annual growth rate, LSE is again the winner here. 
EXR has the highest gross profit margin. Net income margin is the highest at EXR as well. But free cash flow margin is the highest at PSA. And so is the return on total capital. All companies have quite some debt compared to the current cash position. So to me, there's no big winner here. And the last thing that I want to check are the dividends. EXR has the highest dividend yields and growth in dividends. Next to that, they also have the highest consecutive years of dividend increases. To me, EXR is the winner here. Overall, I think EXR did a decent job, since all companies are performing pretty similar. Was EXR stock still a buy at current numbers? Well, for the first time in a really long period, I cannot use the Everything Money software, since the tool has an error with running the correct numbers for EXR. To be more specific, the BE ratio and the price to free cash flow. So I won't be using this tool for now, and I will be using the price to FFO instead. This doesn't give me an exact price target, but it does tell me something about the valuation. Right now it's sitting at 19, which is a little bit on the high side. On the other hand, EXR is likely to merge with Live Storage later this year, which will add a lot of good things to the business. EXR is also still capable of growing at decent numbers. So my bottom line conclusion is that I think they are fairly valued right now. It's a great company with great fundamentals. My final conclusion is that I really like this business. All the things that I've just mentioned are pretty good, such as the fundamentals, dividends and future outlook. The most recent quarter wasn't really that special, or great, so I'm really looking forward to the rest of this year and especially the merger with Live Storage. I don't think they are massively undervalued right now, so I will slowly add more shares to my portfolio whenever the price drops, since the dividends are really great. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.